Charles Goodyear was a self-taught chemist and manufacturing engineer. He was born in New Haven, Connecticut on December 29, 1800. His mother's name was Cynthia Bateman Goodyear, while his father's name was Amasa Goodyear. Goodyear's father owned a little farm on the neck of land in New Haven that is today known as Oyster Point, and it was here that Goodyear spent the earliest years of his life. When Goodyear was quite young, his father secured an interest in a patent for the manufacture of ivory buttons. He started his business with Amasa in 1821 and started the manufacture of new and innovative agriculture equipments. In 1823, Charles Goodyear started learning about the hardware business. He worked there industriously until he was 25 years old. On August 3, 1824, he married Clarissa Beecher. Two years later, the family moved to Philadelphia, and there Charles Goodyear opened a hardware store. This is where he did the most of his work. While still a schoolboy, Goodyear first encountered what was then called gum elastic, but today it is referred as rubber, and its properties left a deep impression on him. He began to carefully examine every article that appeared in the newspaper relative to this new material. Rubber's waterproofing qualities made it a good material to fashion such articles as boots and raincoats, but the material hardened in the cool weather and softened in the summer to an almost putty-like sticky consistency. The Roxbury Rubber Company of Boston had been experimenting with the gum and believed that the company had found a new way to manufacture goods from it. The company produced a line of life preservers and Goodyear noticed that the valve used to inflate the preservers did not operate well. He created his own design and reported back to the company with the improved product. A company manager examined his design and was pleased with him, but he confessed to Goodyear that the company was on the verge of bankruptcy. Thousands of dollars worth of goods that they thought to be of good quality was being returned. The gum having been rotted, making them useless. Goodyear at once made up his mind to experiment on this gum and see if he could overcome the problem with these rubber products. First attempt to cure rubber. Goodyear tried his first experiment with Indian rubber. He incorporated rubber in a certain amount of magnesia, which produced a white color compound. Then it was dipped in turpentine, and it appeared to take away the stickiness. The first thing that he made was shoes, and he used his own house for working the material. It was not long, however, before he discovered that gum, even treated this way, became sticky. Second attempt. to cure rubber his next step was to compound the rubber with magnesia and then boil it in quicklime and water this appeared to solve the problem at once it was noticed abroad that he had treated the indian rubber to lose its stickiness and he received international acclaim for that he seemed on the high road to success until one day he noticed that when a drop of acid fell on the rubber the rubber became soft again this proved to him that the process was not a successful one third attempt to cure rubber Charles Goodyear discovered that rubber when dipped in nitric acid formed a surface cure but a method had not been yet found to process rubber so that it would withstand hot and cold temperatures and acids the rubber is cured the fourth attempt the vulcanization of rubber in 1839 goodyear was at the eagle indian rubber company in the warm burn in massachusetts where he accidentally discovered that combining rubber and sulfur over a hot stove caused the rubber to vulcanize for this goodyear received a patent in the following year goodyear died on july 1 1860 while traveling to see his dying daughter where he died at the age of 59 he is buried in new haven at grove street cemetery in 1898 after four decades of his death the goodyear tire and rubber company was founded and named after goodyear by frank spielberg